Hey everyone, I'm Evgeny Zurov Tsev and uh, welcome to the AI for Developers series, your basic course from concepts to code. So, why another video on AI? You might be thinking, is this just another tutorial on how to write prompts for ChatGPT? Hmm. Well, no, that's not what we are doing here. These videos are for developers, people like you and me, uh, who actually want to build things. I'm going to help you take your first practical steps into the AI world. So, let's start. Okay, in this video we're going to dive into different methods of using LLMs in production and how they can affect your workflow. So, let's dive in. Okay, there is something from the previous episode. First, as a quick refresher, an LLM contains general knowledge that's been loaded into it during training. It can answer queries based only on the information it was trained on. So, the quality of the responses an LLM provides depends heavily on the data it's been exposed to during that training process. And this is a very important point. So, by choosing different methods, we can influence how we interact with an LLM and turn the quality of the responses we receive. What are these methods? There are a few key ways to use LLM in production today. What we have here are prompt engineering, retrieval augmented generation, fine-tuned models and trained models. The choice of a method depends on several factors, such as cost, time, expertise within the organization, available data and the specific use cases that need to be addressed. Also, as we can see, a trained model delivers the best results, but it's important to consider all the factors when choosing how to work with an LLM. So, let's walk through each method, starting with the simplest and break down the advantages and disadvantages of each approach. Okay, prompt engineering is the simplest and uh, most affordable way to start using LLMs. It doesn't change the model, but instead it focuses on structuring your prompts to get the best results from AI. So, how it works? You provide the LLM with carefully phrased prompts to guide its response. And since the model is generalized, the accuracy depends on how well the prompt is structured. This often requires tweaking through trial and error approach. Also, adding context, like examples of your potential response, helps improve the quality of the response. And uh, there are different prompting techniques uh, well known here in this area. They're called zero-shot prompts, one-shot prompts and few-shot prompts. As an example, let's say you want to ask an AI how to make a sandwich. So with zero-shot prompt we directly ask the question, so how do I make a sandwich? And AI could respond to you, well, put all ingredients together. That's not super helpful, right? And now let's take a look at one-shot prompt. Uh, here we would ask, uh, we would give the prompt providing an example. So here's how I made a pizza. I added sauce, cheese and toppings to a base. So now how do I make a sandwich? And in that case, AI could respond us, well, Take two slices of bread, add some filling like meat, cheese and veggies and you've got a sandwich. A bit more direction here, right? And finally, let's take a look at few short prompts. So here I provide several examples and the whole prompt sounds like uh, here, here's how I made a pizza, I added sauce, cheese and toppings to a base and here's how I made a salad. I combined veggies and dressing, so now how do I make a sandwich? And in that case, AI can or would reply us to make a sandwich, take two slices of bread, spread some sauce or condiments on them, layer with fillings like turkey, cheese, lettuce and tomatoes and put the slices together. That's much more detailed. Calling an API with a prompt that includes extra content is very simple, which makes it a popular choice for companies just starting with LLMs. It's especially useful for teams with uh, limited AI expertise or resources. 
This method is effective for general tasks, but costs can add up if you're handling a lot of requests uh, against the paid API provider. The second method we will cover is retrieval augmented generation or simply RUG. So, LLMs, as generally known, are trained on basic knowledge or general knowledge, which may not be enough when a company needs responses based on specific internal information. They also can't provide updates on recent events or access private company data without help. Well, so actually here I wanted to show you how LLM struggle is uh, getting the latest data, like asking for, I don't know, Tesla's stock price in the future. But unfortunately, the nowadays, uh, with the newer versions of ChatGPT using online tools to fetch real-time info, that demo doesn't quite work anymore. So uh, that, was, that would be the expected answer when you're asking something which your LLM does know. But now instead, let's talk about how RUG steps into handle this. Okay, so with RUG, the application pulls data from external sources, stores it in a vector database and links that data in the prompt. This allows the LLM to retrieve and use the most relevant information when generating a response. For example, if the LLM is asked a question, it can search the vector database, find the necessary information and integrate it into its response. Uh, this approach in enhanced accuracy and ensures the model can work with both public and private up-to-date information. I will not get too deep into the technical details of uh, vector databases right now. Just think of them as handy tools that organize a special kind of data called vector embeddings, kind of like data fingerprints. These bits of information are stored and uh, can be pulled by the LLM later to help generate better responses. So going back, when you ask a question, the LLM can use these stored chunks to add more context to the prompt, giving you a more accurate answer. Like here's an example. We can generate a context uh, with specific um, information, like you're an AI assistant in a tech startup office answering quick questions from employees. If you don't know the answer, response is, hmm, that's above my pay grade, better ask the intern. And also we can attach the link to a specific document, PDF, which was previously uploaded to our vector database. And in this case, the query itself is pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, it's uh, how do I fix the coffee machine when it says ER404, brew not found. As you stop for a moment and think about that, this approach has some clear benefits. Now the quality of responses isn't just based on how you phrase the prompt, but also on the internal data you provide, which is usually more organized and specific. This often results in better answers. However, please keep in mind that the quality of the output depends on the quality of the information you give to the method. And another thing to watch out here is data privacy, because sending internal information to an external LLM provider could pose some risks as well as, as well known that some models might retain data that passes through them. And also, sending extra data increases the size of the request, known, this thing known as a token window, which can raise costs and slow down the processing time due to the extra external calls that's being made. While prompt engineering and RUG work well for some tasks, they have their own limitations. When things get more complex, fine-tuning a model can give better results. So, fine-tuning is a more involved process where the LLM is trained on a specific dataset that's designed for the task you want it to handle. This dataset includes input-output examples that show the model what kind of results are expected from it. By training on this data, the model becomes more focused and better at performing the specific task. Once the model is fine-tuned, you don't need to provide detailed examples or extra information with each prompt. The model already has the necessary content built in, 
making it faster and cheaper to use. The quality of the responses also improves uh, because the model already knows the task. However, fine-tuning takes time and resources, especially if you are working with a lot of documents. You also need to spend time organizing and formatting the data properly before training the model. And finally, the most demanding approach is building a tra trained model from scratch. This method is ideal if you have a large amount of specialized data and need a model built specifically for your field. By creating your own model, you can achieve the, the highest quality results, perfectly tailored to your exact needs. However, this approach is both time-consuming and very, very, very expensive. Developing a trained model from scratch can take several months to over a year, depending on the complexity and size of the data. The cost can be significant, often reaching hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars due to the need for high-end hardware, expert engineers and data scientists. For example, training large models like OpenAI GPT can require thousands of GPUs running in parallel for weeks or even months. So, as a small recap, while this approach gives you the best result, it requires a heavy investment in both time and resources. Let's quickly summarize and compare the different methods for using LLMs in production, focusing on the key factors for each approach. Prompt engineering is the simplest option, uh, no need to change the model. You can quickly tweak prompts to improve results. It's affordable because there is no extra training involved. So the whole method is best for fast setups and simple tasks. Retrieval augmented generation or simply RAG. It uses external data to give more accurate answers. It works well with large data sets and real-time needs. It's really great for keeping the model updated with the new information. So as a bottom line, we can say that it's best for uh, when you need up-to-date information without retraining your model. Fine-tuned model gives you more control over the model's output. It works for various tasks and models. Once fine-tuned, it's cheaper to run since all the info is already built into the model. And it's good for tasks that need high accuracy and consistency, especially with large data. And finally, trained model. It's built specifically for your unique needs. It gives you the most accurate and tailored responses. It's costly and takes a lot of time and resources to set it up, but offers the, the highest quality. So it's really good for highly specialized tasks with lots of proprietary data and long-term usage. Thanks for watching the second video in our AI for Developer series. I hope you now have a better idea of how to use LLMs in real projects and feel ready to continue learning about AI. You know, this video is just the beginning. There is always more to discover. So if you want to dive deeper, in the description below, I've included links to some AI books you might find helpful. Feel free to check them out. And stay tuned for the next video. Don't hesitate to leave your comments or questions. I'll see you next time.